Welcome to our next edition of Eurochat. My name is Steve Cooper, I'm your host, and tonight I have the honor of having us joined by Dr. Alvi. Dr. Alvi, thank you for being here. Thanks, Steve, thanks for having me here. Absolutely. Tonight we're gonna to talk about three topics. First, with Dr. Alvi, we're gonna explore cutting edge technology for prostate cancer treatment called HIFU. Then we'll get into urinary incontinence as well as erectile dysfunction. So I'd like to start off, Dr. Alvi, if you don't mind, tell us about your background, kind of where you grew up, where you went to school, um, your practice, and we'll kind of go from there. Sure, Steve. So I'm originally from Pakistan. I came to U.S. in 2002. I did my postdoctoral training uh, in Connecticut. Then I trained uh, at Mass General Hospital in uh, Boston. Um, after I graduated, I came to Arizona in 2011. So I've been practicing for about eight years now. Um, and most of my practice is in Mesa and Gilbert area. So we have two locations, one in Mesa, one in Gilbert. And uh, most of my um, surgeries are done uh, in East Valley as well. And you're a board certified urologist, correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay. And what does your, your area of practice mostly focus on? So um, I focus a lot on prostate cancer as well as bladder and kidney cancer. So I do a lot of robotic surgery. Um, I've been trained to do laparoscopic as well as robotic surgery in my training. So I continued that when I moved to Arizona and uh, been uh, having some great results. That's fantastic. So when you were going through school, you had a lot of options, I'm sure, right? You had orthopedic surgery, general medicine. Why did you choose urology? Yeah, so I, w I wanted to be a cardiac surgeon originally. So I was uh, in my second year of training um, and I rotated through urology. And I love the fact that there's so much variety. One day you are doing a major surgery for eight hours, removing someone's bladder for bladder cancer but the next day you were dealing with some gadgets and doing kidney stone surgery. So there was a lot of variety which really attracted me. So you can do a lot of in-office procedures, but next day you can be doing a major, major surgery. So I really liked the variety of uh, pathology we see in urology. And at that time I decided that I really want to go into urology and, and uh, practice uh, medicine. Oh, that's great, you mentioned pathology. My father was a pathologist. Um, so you do a lot of urological um, cancer work. Correct. Right. Okay, and so prostate, bladder, kidney, things of that nature. Yes, uh, I do mostly I would say bladder and prostate cancer and some of robotics I do for uh, kidney cancer as well. That's great. And you mentioned robotics. Can you kind of break that down for the la average person when we think of robotics and we think of the, the, the dust vacuum cleaner, we think of big robots t taking over cities, but you're using robotics and technology in the operating room, correct? Yes, so you know the robotics became very popular in urology in 2001. It was actually built for a military, you know, if people are far away and they got injured, right. you have a robotic surgeon which can be seen remotely and can take care of those patients. And then urologists uh, took over this technology in 2001, 2002. Um, we do a lot of deep pelvic surgery. And it's very difficult to do that uh, when you're doing it open. So with the robotic surgery, basically you have a patient lying on the table and then you have a console sitting on the other end of the table where the surgeon is sitting. And with the help of the assist, you basically put the ports in. And then you can, you know, you have three degree range of motion. So you can really operate uh, with more precisely and meticulously and with much minimal blood loss. So robotic surgery became more and more popular because uh, patients have minimal pain, less blood loss, and eat faster recovery. Uh, we started with prostate, it became more popular for robotic prostatectomies, radical prostatectomy for prostate cancer. Sure. And then we started using it for you know, kidney cancer as well as bladder cancer. So I would say 90% of urology cases are done uh, robotically now or more, uh, especially for prostate cancer. When would it be a situation where you would not use a robot and you would have to go a traditional method, a, a larger incision, things of that nature? It's very rare, at least for prostates. You know, I would say it has been more than five years that I had to convert somebody from robotic prostatectomy to an open procedure. It's just good training. You continue to keep doing that. Um, very rare circumstances that you will have to do an open prostatectomy unless you get into major blood loss or um, you hit some blood vessels and you cannot control the bleeding. In those scenarios, you can do open surgery. But most of the urologists uh, from residency who are being trained, they all are well trained to do robotics now. Oh, that's great. I remember I was in the military in the 90s and we were with surgeons that were pioneering this technology. 
And so we were told to protect this, you know, vehicle at all costs because that had the robot. There's a, a golden hour, you know, in the battlefield that we think that when a soldier is shot, they have usually one hour to get to see a doctor. But, you know, it can be often difficult if the troops are that forward, eight hours advance, how do they get back to see a surgeon? So to your point, using the robots on the battlefield, we're able to speed things up and save lives. Um, we're seeing you know, incredible results right now, soldiers being saved within that golden hour. It's really neat to see that technology transfer over to modern day medicine. Yeah, I mean, that was the whole point. I mean, there was a time we were thinking that, uh, you know, you are sitting in one country and you can be operating in Europe on somebody and, you know, be surgeons who are highly trained and if they need help and they can all go there, you can be operated from, you know, from U.S. and some other country. So that was the whole idea. And I think that's the future, uh, that the medicine should be available to anybody in the world. And we can do that with this robotic no technology. That's fantastic. Um, I know that when we met, you talked about your pioneering work with HIFU. Uh, can you talk to us about your work in HIFU, how you brought that work here, and what that has led to in terms of medical outcomes? Yes, yeah, so HIFU stands for High Intensity Focus Ultrasound Treatment for Prostate Cancer. Um, it was approved in U.S. in end of 2015, and uh, we did the first case in Arizona in September of 2017. Um, the idea behind HIFU is it's a new treatment for prostate cancer. Uh, it's non-invasive, so there's no cuts involved like robotic surgery, and the, and, the, and the risk for any complications is less than 50 percent as com compared to standard prostatectomy or radiation treatment. Where so, the risks and side effects are extremely high. Which are extremely high, such as erectile dysfunction or urine sure. incontinence. So it led to my interest, and you know, we have treated up to 30 plus patients now in a year and a half, and uh, patients uh, love the fact that the recovery is much faster. Uh, they do not have to wear any pads. And uh, so there's a lot of new data to come. Uh, most of the data which is available for HIFU at this time is uh, European data. Uh, it has been used in Europe for about 10 or 15 years now. And now um, I think in US a lot of uh, big academic centers are trying to explore HIFU. Uh, and we are excited about this uh, and other treatment options for the patients, uh, especially younger patients who are really worried about the side effects. Oh, that's fantastic. I know when I was diagnosed early, it was a big discussion about quality of life versus quantity of life. Yeah. And you know, at the course of the time I chose the, the quantity of life, but that meant sacrificing a lot of my quality of life. So then I was left with, unfortunately, erectile dysfunction, urinary incontinence, and a whole host of other side effects. Um, it's fantastic to hear that there's new technologies that could really change, is a game changer, that can really help these young men when they're diagnosed. Absolutely, it's a burden of prostate cancer. You know, there are a lot of times we've watched this young men with prostate cancer with active surveillance, but the burden of cancer is too much. If you're gonna live 40 years plus, and living with the burden of cancer not being treated sometimes can be very challenging. So HIFU is a great treatment option for those patients who have low to intermediate risk prostate cancer, who do not want to deal with those uh, side effects and those challenges, uh, you can do HIFU. And the nice thing is you still have other options available. So let's say in worst case scenario, if you have a recurrence of your prostate cancer after HIFU treatment, you can still explore options of surgery or radiation. But you had those good 10 years, 15 years without any side effects or least amount of side effects. So, so definitely has a role in my opinion and we'll see how the future entails. And can a patient go back for another high food treatment? Let's say there's a reoccurrence four years later. Is that a possibility as well? Absolutely, so yes, you can have uh, repeat high food. Luckily, we haven't had any patients that needed in the last year and a half in my own patients. But yes, you can retreat them high food. If there's any prostate tissue left, you will do an MRI and see if you detect it then you can go back and treat that portion of the prostate. So I say everything has the good and the bad or the, the pros and the cons, but with this technology, I'm having a hard time finding some of the shortfalls. Are there any disadvantages you can think of that are just where a patient is not suitable? I think you know most of the treatments are recommended for low to intermediate risk prostate cancer. We still need a lot of uh, data in US to you know randomize double blind studies to see how HIFU is going to evolve. I think short term, I don't see any you know, uh, risk factors. Long term, we need to know how good a treatment is for patients who have prostate cancer. And there's need to be training. Uh, there's going to be surgeon to surgeon variability in the treatment. So I think those things uh, uh, we have to see with the data. Uh, but I think short term, uh, we have very promising results. That's fantastic. You mentioned results. Um, of the 30 some patients, I know it's been a short span, but over a year and a half, I assume, as far as you know, they're all alive, they're all doing well? 
all alive, all doing well, nobody required any diapers, nobody required any pads after the treatment. And, um, and the nice thing is that, you know, we have patients coming from all over the country here sure. to get treated. Um, you can treat one side, so where the biopsy came by positive, it's only on the one side, you can just treat that side of the prostate and just wash their cancer. So that's the idea, focal therapy, that's the future. MRI guided, you know, we are uh, doing MRI fusion biopsies now. So we use MRI to detect the area of the prostate where the cancer is. We do biopsy that area. If you find cancer, we can only treat that area to prevent any side effects. So that's the future is getting better and better. So I think uh, keeping that in mind, the, I think the future entails that less and less surgery and more and more other treatment modalities for prostate cancer, in my opinion. That's incredible. Can this high food treatment be utilized in other cancers? And, and also, for example, you know, I, I'm often told that my cancer, you know, eventually will spread one day, being a stage four metastatic disease. It has spread to lymph nodes and bone. Um, when it continues to spread, can that treatment be utilized in other areas, let's say the kidney or the lungs? Yeah, so, so as far as to my knowledge, it is already used for liver tumors. The nice thing is the areas which are too far to reach, but with the ultrasonic waves, you can focus on that area and you can treat it. So the different machines are evolving for HIFU and even in the brain that uh, can be uh, utilized to treat brain cancer as well as liver cancer. So I think there's a big, big uh, research going on right now for different kind of cancers. Um, and we are very excited that we are using it for prostate cancer now. That's great. FDA approved insurance, how does that work? Yeah, so FDA, you know, takes a long time to approve for any kind of cancer treatment. Sure. So right now it's approved for prostate ablation, okay. but we as urologists only use it for prostate cancer. Um, Medicare since June started covering portion of it. So for the hospital facility fee as well as uh, the equipment fee, uh, Medicare is reimbursing it. I think by end of next year, we are hoping that it will be com completely covered by Medicare and most of the private insurances then follow that. Fantastic, and I think from a Medicare perspective, there's gotta be a cost benefit analysis and if you're producing great outcomes and the cost is, I assume, less expensive than a radical prostatectomy, it should be a no-brainer for them, right? Absolutely, and that's the point. So we are hoping that you know Medicare will have uh, reimbursements, that the hospitals will be able to afford it. It's very difficult right now to get this uh, you know procedure done in any surgery center or uh, in any hospital. So uh, we are hoping that you know Medicare will reimburse those facilities well because the cost still is much lower than robotic radical prostatectomy or radiation for prostate cancer. Fantastic. Well, Dr. Alvi, this has been very informative. Where can patients contact you if they want more information about the HIFU and, and seeing you as a doctor? Yeah, so if they go on my website, it's azurologicsurgeons.com. Okay. Um, they can go on my website and they can learn more about HIFU or, or they can contact our office and we are happy to give them more information about that. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. This concludes the first um, episode of Eurochat with Dr. Alvi talking about HIFU and the advances in technology. Stay tuned for the next segment where we'll talk about erectile dysfunction. Thank you.